Using just a pen and a paper without any telescope, a new planet was discovered. French astronomer Urbain Le Verrier surprised the entire scientific community by accomplishing this feat 177 years ago. But how did he manage to do that? Welcome back to the new video from Curiosity Drive. The story begins with an apple that fell from a tree in front of the famous physicist Sir Isaac Newton and landed on the ground. Upon witnessing this scene, he fell into deep thought. Why didn't the apple fall to the side or upwards after breaking from the branch? Why did it come down straight? On the basis of this incident, he created universal gravitational law according to which any two objects in space attract each other. The one with more mass will have more gravity and it will attract the smaller mass towards itself. This attraction is called gravity. And this gravitational law is not only limited to our world, but also applies to the entire solar system and universe. One of its largest and simplest examples is our solar system. All the planets orbiting the sun are smaller than the sun. That's why they are attracted towards it and continue to circle around it in their particular orbits. Our moon also revolves around the Earth under the same gravitational law. The Earth, which is many times bigger than the Moon, attracts the Moon towards itself. On the other hand, the Moon is no doubt small, but it also has some gravity. The gravity of the Moon is not so much that it could move the Earth from its orbit, but it pulls the water of the sea towards itself, due to which waves are created in the sea. Imagine for a moment that the Moon is not orbiting around our Earth, but is stationary. In such a scenario, do you know what would happen? In just a few minutes, the moon would collide with our Earth. Yes, while Earth's gravity pulls the moon toward itself, the moon's orbital motion also generates a force that pushes it outward. This outward force is known as centrifugal force. Because the centrifugal force of the moon and the gravity of the Earth are equal, the moon rotates in its fixed orbit. In the same way, all the planets also orbit around the Sun. Numerous experiments were conducted on Newton's law of gravitation. Extensive research was carried out, and it was proven that the entire universe's system depends on this law. This happened back in the year 1846, when Uranus was considered the last planet in our solar system. Uranus, which is four times larger than Earth, had been discovered relatively recently in 1781 with the assistance of a telescope. But a strange phenomenon was noted in the orbit of this planet. This planet was not fully obeying Newton's gravitational law. When it comes to a certain point in its orbit, it starts moving around on its own. How can only one planet go against gravitational law due to which the system of the entire universe is running? For 60 years, astronomers around the world were puzzled by this unique behavior of Uranus. Among them was a French astronomer, Urbain Le Verrier. He used to study Uranus all night, but its movement against the gravitational law and leaving its orbit was beyond his understanding. Le Verrier said that this can only be possible under one condition that there is a huge mass or planet near the point where the Uranus moves up and down. But the problem was that no one could see any planet around it. Some even started saying that something is missing in Newton's gravitational law. Perhaps this law is wrong. Le Verrier, who spent most of his life researching stars and planets, insisted that the gravitational law is correct and that possibly another planet is attracting Uranus. On the night of the 23rd of September, 1846, Le Verrier was again deep in thought, looking up at the sky as usual. Then he picked up a paper and a pen and got busy doing a long mathematical calculation. When the result of the calculation came, he indicated a pinpoint location near Uranus. He said that there must be another planet near Uranus at this point. Not only its position, but Le Verrier also calculated its mass and concluded that the mass of this secret planet is the same as Uranus. When he published all these details, 
Astronomers who opposed this theory made fun of Le Verrier, because apparently no such planet existed near Uranus. He forwarded all these details to the largest observatory in Berlin at that time, and requested them to examine a specific region of space near Uranus using a powerful telescope. When Dr. Johann Gottfried Gall of the Berlin Observatory looked into this particular part of the sky, he also found nothing except dark sky. But when he focused a little more, there was indeed a blue planet floating exactly where Le Verrier had indicated. It was actually about the size of Uranus, meaning it could fit four planets as large as our Earth. Consider that if the Earth is a tennis ball, then its size is the size of a basketball. Le Verrier's prediction and calculations were absolutely accurate. The eighth planet of the solar system was discovered, which we know today as Neptune. Neptune is the first planet that was discovered not with a telescope, but with the help of maths formulas, a paper, and a pen. This planet was also predicted by Galileo, the famous astronomer and inventor of the telescope before Le Verrier, but Galileo always considered it a star. He also depicted it in his numerous drawings, but only as a star, not as a planet. It was for this reason that the credit for its discovery went to Le Verrier rather than Galileo. He certainly got the credit, but he always wanted the planet's name to be associated with his own name, Le Verrier. But because at that time the names of planets and stars were always named after gods, that is why many people objected to connecting the name of this new planet with Le Verrier. After reaching a consensus, it was named after the Roman god Neptune. In 1989, NASA's Voyager 2 spacecraft flew past Neptune for the first time. During this flyby, Voyager 2 captured several photographs of Neptune from a distance of 3,000 miles. It is the most distant and last planet of our solar system. Just to get an idea of it, consider it like that. If the distance of Earth from the Sun is one astronomical unit, then Neptune is 30 astronomical units away from the Sun. Due to being so far from the Sun, the temperature here is minus 392 degrees Fahrenheit. According to NASA, it is a huge ice giant where storms are taking place all the time. Storms whose speed reaches 1,200 miles per hour. Remember that the speed of the fastest storm on Earth was recorded up to 253 miles per hour. One day here is equal to 16 hours of Earth and one year here is as long as 165 years of Earth. Le Verrier, who found this planet only through mathematical formulas, is not alive today, but this model of Neptune on his grave in Paris will always remind us of his achievement. I hope that you will like share and comment on this video of Curiosity Drive. See you in the next wonderful video.